Starting light from a new checkpoint? <laughs> right at the insults. <laughs> wow. That's severe. Swear I got that dog in him. Sofu Bozu. Death by. <laughs> Restart by death by. Sweet potato? Thanks, Mom. Okay, there it is. She had to get get the Sundary out first. <laughs> That's intense. Come to think of it, we... Am I totally forgetting? We didn't see the end of the fight, did we? So we all kind of just blacked out there. The pup was still around. Man, RPG towns just do a terrible job with wildlife management. They're a disgrace to humanity. Humanity's whole purpose of life is to enslave nature. Mob beast exists for us, for our consumption and pleasure, for our consumption in zoos. Yeah, let's not worry about the magical beasts inhabiting every inch of this country, except for our 100 meter patch of huts. Everything will be fine. We don't need to think about it as long as this flimsy magical barrier is up. What could go wrong? There are a surprising amount of places where there are just wild dogs roaming around. It's really unsettling sometimes going home. If where you're staying is not on a main street, and suddenly there's like a pack of dogs in your path. I got my heels nipped at once riding my bicycle through the suburbs of Taiwan. This is probably what would actually happen if people from our world entered a game world. Immediately you would make the connection between EXP and power and we would almost immediately start min-maxing our stats. We would just rush out of the villages to massacre every every level 5 beast to extinction. The most crafty of us would go out and create systems to spawn monsters so they could be killed for experience as quickly as possible. Literally farming for experience. <laughs> I could never relax in this village if I had children. How does being a hero taste? How does having consecutive days of relationships feel? Oh, we had to come here, huh? This looks serious. Oh, we didn't cure the curse. It's disappointing. I guess it's one of those exponential effects. Turns out the mobbies are farming Subaru for experience. What if we kill them? What if we kill them before half a day? Yeah, don't just create a problem, give a solution. I know you're, you're really nice and we're, we're best friends. He's getting cute with it. He's like making jokes for his own benefit. He has inside jokes with himself. He's speaking to a fourth wall that he doesn't know is there. There's something about that I like though. You're in really good shape if you bring yourself amusement, if you can make yourself laugh. There it is. There it is. Oh, maybe our conquest dreams will come true. Yeah, extinction event. It's your destiny as a human. No, we're not losing this. We're not losing this progress. Honestly, I feel better about this than like the previous problems. Mystery curse? Rem killing you in the darkness? Stabbed from behind by Elsa? This is just, you know, like a normal enemy horde. You can recruit Rem and Ram. What is this? What is happening? Oh, okay, no, that was flashback to the conversation they had over his dying body. They are always lurking. She's trying to save him. Again with this? Why do you have to do everything alone, Rem? No regard for anyone else's feelings. Well, I mean, too much regard for people's feelings. No regard for their feelings for her of care and not wanting her to die. It's funny how many of these characters are connected along similar lines. I mean, a lot of them do the same thing of apologizing, thinking someone helping them is a burden. They can't see that at least they're in the process of forming a dynamic of reciprocal giving and generosity of which everyone benefits on all sides, not just the, re the receiving, but the act of service to people in one's life and environment. It's weird, but there's something about that that's unfair. Why does she feel like she has to do everything alone? On a very lifelike level, 
home. I've seen and experienced this go wrong. There's a situation where somebody is really afraid of anything going wrong. Anyone being unhappy. I actually think there's sometimes a connection there between people who have that instinct to sort of like smooth out everything themselves and people who either grew up in an unstable environment where things could escalate or devolve very quickly. So like they're very attuned to signs of trouble or some major event where them not paying more careful attention to negative signs resulted in some kind of internalized punishment. So what they'll do is they'll take full responsibility for everyone's well-being and happiness in the situation and try to preemptively ward off any sort of negative situation that might arise, which is a losing battle for just so many reasons. Like in a group of sufficient size, it's almost impossible to make everyone happy. And it's not even clear you should be trying to make everyone happy. Additionally, because of the heightened sensitivity and reading that there is danger in the situation, it often gets overstated in that person's mind. And so they do too much. They overdo it. They undermine what people actually want. It risks totally backfiring and actually causing the, the negativity and anger because people feel betrayed if they find out you had such a negative view of them that you felt you had to ward off their own behavior to save them from themselves without consulting you, without talking to you, that you know better than everyone else in the group. And so then a negative response is evoked, which then perpetuates the spiral in that person's mind because they're like, wow, people are so volatile and negative. I have to control for this and so on and so forth. Why would you do it for the kids, Barusu? We go together. We don't all rush off alone. Oh god, she's like the, the chimera ant. What was his name? What are you talking about? <laughs> Bring Beatrice. I bet Beatrice is a badass. We got different skills. Is that bad? Do you not have Berserk mode? Or healing mode. We've experienced it. A cold shiver ran down Subaru's spine. He's growing. みっともなく甘かせてもらう。逆転劇を起こそうぜ。あんだけひでえ状態からここまで持ち直したんだ。欲張りな俺は俺らしく。俺含めた後日談が見たくてしょうがねえんだよ。<笑> <laughs> I like how he, it's so it's so cool. It's inspiring. It's just funny to me that he's speaking in these terms that no one else can understand. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Story. Big hero energy, though. Not one episode, probably not coincidentally, after he was a huge blubbering mess on Emilia's lap. I mean, there's definitely some bravado in here. He's definitely terrified. Still, it feels real. This also feels authentic to him and what he's thinking and what he wants. I really like this kind of thing. I like the way he phrased it. What I'm about to say might sound ridiculous, and it doesn't always work. There is a cool mental card you can pull if you're in a spiral where just things look really bleak, where you give full credit credit to the bleakness and how dim your chances seem. And then you follow it up with like, and yet I'm still here fighting and win or lose, I will fight to the end. Just occupying that space for a second sometimes just changes the whole color of the thing, of the struggle. The way that I experience this is I just immediately think of the cast of My Hair Academia. I've seen those moments enough times now where I can never get to their level, but like I can aspire to reach for it, you know? <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> right? He did give a heroic speech. Oh no. At least he brought a sword this time. I'm almost inclined to say that they should have told Amelia Sen too. Show off your sword. It took us a long time to get our first weapon that wasn't chair or table. Making animals extinct. What was that? Don't be just putting stuff in my pockets, kids. Oh, okay, it's candy. <laughs> and I'm pretty stoned, alright. Call that a win. See? I was about to say, they finally respect him, but no. They like him, they love him. He's ruined all all possibility for manliness in that moment. <laughs> was she really getting angry at the attention he was he was receiving? Those are humans accepting us. Oh, is that why she was getting pissed? Subaru just living her dream with no sacrifices. If that's what it is, that's extra meaningful for Ram to think about townspeople having affinity for Ram. She can only watch one at a time. Oh, 
That was beast. Yeah, a light wind attack. She undersold that. Oh god, Subaru is that character that never gains any levels. Hopefully there's shared EXP. That's what I've seen so far, Subaru's the one losing his head. What makes you so great? You're jealous? Jealous. Oh, did she remove it to join the people? Did they reject her anyway? Oh, there it is. That's a story there. Mm. That's a tough dynamic. They obviously love each other very much and have been through a lot together. But if it's not really well managed, that situation feels like a recipe for conflict. It's tiring to feel responsible for everything. It's also painful to feel like you're a burden on someone. And simultaneously, each is projecting onto the other. I think that unless relationships are very carefully cultivated, anything that's not natural play creates stressors. And those stressors have a way of exacerbating over time. And in very frustrating ways, it's not just the obvious. For example, the debt. It's that it's uncomfortable living with the debt, being self-conscious about the debt, projecting that debt onto Rem, let's say, having vague machinations that Rem must hate you because of the debt you've caused, and then on some maybe subconscious level, resenting Rem for that. Or if it's not as severe as full-blown resentment, it's like a little bit of a withdrawal, which then Rem could possibly misread as disdain for her. But really, it's just like this unresolved conflict that's creating repeated nagging stress that adds up over time. One way I've experienced this is even though I didn't expect things to play out this way, me lending someone money made them resentful of me. It's not resentment necessarily, it's like guilt that then somehow gets translated into something like resentment, even while being simultaneously thankful. It's complicated. Another pain point where things can go wrong is if somewhere in the giving, there was something impure. It wasn't totally the desire to help. It, it was like, I have to do this because of some concept of it being the right thing to do. You see this sometimes in romantic relationships where there will be a problem and somebody will cite something really nice they've been doing for you as a reason why this problem shouldn't exist. And everyone loses in that situation because suddenly the charity they were giving you doesn't look like charity anymore. It looks like something they didn't want to do, but did because they wanted to affect some outcome or some concept you have of them. It immediately switches from a gift to debt, which again is not comfortable. It's why you should never cite charitable things you've done in the past for, for any kind of leverage in the situation. Even if you genuinely did do them out of the kindness of your heart. It's such a destructive interactional strategy. It, it always backfires. I imagine that for the sisters, since they obviously have such a great deal of affinity for each other, a lot of the tension is actually going to be fear of what they've done to the other. There's like this big vacuum in the middle that could be so nicely resolved by mutual understanding and conversation. <laughs> They split horns. They're like part of the same being, in a sense. Yeah, ochre society not looking great. Surely Rem wouldn't be reckless. It's complicated. What? That, yeah, that's the hand, right? What would that do for the mobbies? Okay, so that does speak to the idea that it's not just a random side quest in between checkpoints. That the mobbies are very closely connected to the witch. Bold. His names are not great. I mean, she's crazy powerful, though. Oh, she got wrecked? This is amazing that he's able to just like carry her under his arm like she's a satchel and sprint. And the sword, on the other hand. Don't break the sword. A one arm pull up holding a full grown woman. Okay, there it is. That pull up wasn't happening anyway. <laughs> nice. Looks like she saved him over herself. Or did she bounce? The second time our battle plan has been being saved by Rem. This is the cute little monk dog. She's a bit intimidating. 
Rem's not really here right now. Rem must kill dogs. And kill Subaru. She's lost it. She's gone full demon. As if she wasn't waiting to kill him. We went to the forest adventure. Remember the forest adventure that we had yesterday. These dogs saving Subaru's life right now, amazingly. With your half sword. <laughs> they got all their attention. Okay. Good enough, I guess. Amazing that the threat now has become Ram. Last episode, Subaru bonded with Ram over a common enemy, the dogs. In this episode, Subaru bonds with Ram over a common enemy, Ram. Net result, bonding with both sisters. I'm getting the same anxiety from these scenes that I get from games when you've done a lot and like for whatever reason, there's just no save point. You're like, God, it really would suck to die now. Imagine doing all this over. I wonder in the show, what is the record? What is the maximum for number of episodes devoted to the same time segment? <laughs> oh no. She's gonna catch her, yeah. Leaving her vulnerable. Whoops. Yeah, I mean, she's intimidating, I get it. I hate you. Don't return by death. Don't return by death. Demonically inspired methods. <laughs> That's good. Attacks cancel fall damage. That checks. Subaru feels like a very different person. I mean, he's out there fighting now. It's also kind of funny to me that it feels like explicitly the target for his life and affection is Amelia. But in the process, the people we're really getting to know are the people around her. First with Beatrice, I think. And now with Rem and Ram. I mean, this is turning into a pretty special relationship very quickly. I mean, just the shared experiences they're having. The level of understanding he's developing of them and their history and their challenge. Which I actually feel like Subaru is in a unique position to help. Because he has relationships with both of them separately from each other, which I think allows them to shine a little bit more more authentically than they are with each other. There's a little bit of like guardedness happening between them, but also just by virtue of his personality, because, you know, his exuberance can be a little bit grating at times, especially when it feels unnatural. But like, there is a positive element of that, which is like, if you go far enough and confidently enough into that all the way, you can cross over into the other side of it and you like blast people with your exuberance and it will be disarming and it will be effective. He has the personality. He is in the position where he might be able to draw them out to say what they've been holding in all this time, maybe even to express it to each other. It also feels to me like Rem and Ram need to go through a similar breakdown of a certain kind that he went through that we saw a couple episodes ago where they're just bottling up a whole lot especially in relation to each other they both mean so much to each other but they both have internalized something like everything that exists in the dynamic that's negative is their fault their inadequacy rem said that rem is disappointed or resentful for her losing her horn or something like that it's definitely possible that's true to an extent it's also possible she's projecting a little bit of her own disappointment in herself that what rem really wants is for her to be happy and safe i mean like whatever that folktale really meant maybe it's a literal story i don't know she clearly is willing to sacrifice for Ram's well-being. So like the horn may not be as important as Ram thinks it is. There's just a lot of like story weaving happening that needs to be cleared by just like one honest mutual breakdown.